And so now that you're to this point and you got the air box, you know, you're down to the air box and such, there's a lot of different ways to skin this cat. Um, I use just a set of these uh, uh, driver, these driver uh, nuts, wrenches right here that goes into the cordless screwdriver. And it does make things pretty handy. Of course, you see on there, uh, on the air box screws, what's left of when I put uh, the blue silicon all the way around. You can see it definitely went through and adhered to the uh, uh, screws, which is what I wanted it to do. And of course, you got this little piece right here, take off the sensor, uh, and it just you just push on it and uh, pull it loose. Of course, what helps is that. You know, everything that I that's electrical like this, I put a little dielectric grease on it when I put it back together. Makes it easier to get off. I'm gonna have to probably, yeah, use a little bit of a box blade knife to go around the edge and to sort of break the uh, the blue uh, silicon that I put around there. What I want to do is I ran the box blade around and broke the seal of the uh, RV silicon right there. And as I break this open, of course, this bike I put a Canyon filter in it. And I did take the trumpets off. See, you do not see the, the ducks, I mean, uh, that are in the front of the box. Not the trumpets, I'm, I misspoke. But right there, um, I pulled those off. Just, man, I don't think they're needed. And this is just me with, with them gone. Air now flows across the top of the motor and helps dispel the heat. Plus, those two big holes suck great big amounts of air. So let's have a look in the box. See what's in there. Maybe it's full of mud and just shit loads of dirt that I can like have enough to mix concrete with. Oh, look at there. Pretty clean. Pretty clean. Do I see some re residual down in the, the very bottom? I do. I see a little bit. Um, let me look on the butterfly valves. No. What I see is exactly what was there last time. I so the K&N looks like it did a pretty good job. Of course, you can see how I sealed it up. You know, I used RV silicon on the front, on the back, and all around it on the bottom. And then I put the silicon along the channel edges and such. So, all right. Of course, what else I got is I got these long-stemmed sort of star bits that I just put in the, the edge and they're magnetized and uh, kind of put it in there like so and helps me break these loose and get them. Well, now that I got the air box out, I, the completely out, I thought I'd just uh, show a better, better picture of the inside part of it. You know, right there. Of course, the front, right there, and you can definitely see crap that it's uh, definitely caught, which is what it's supposed to do. The back of it, you know, looks pretty good and clean. So once you get the air box off, this is kind of what it looks like, right here. As you can see from down below. This is the fuel injector uh, fuel tube that runs up from the tank, and, and see how it runs into the the fuel rail right up here, and then it goes down right there into the injectors. And I, <clears throat> on the butterflies, you know, I'm cleaning up a little bit of residual that you see right here. You know what? The more I think about it, the more I think that this is probably. Now I, now, I do think some of that's just left over from last time because I didn't clean them up real good. Just wiped them off and I just I wasn't that worried about it. But I think what I'm seeing here is a little bit of residual from the uh, K&N filter, which is an, which is an oil impregnated filter. Uh, so I would expect to see a little bit of oil and such. And of course, one of the reasons that I'm doing all this is, is I do have the new plugs to put in stuff and as you see right there that's one area for a new plug right there's the other area each cylinder has two they use two different type plugs also 
uh, just so you know when you do this. And of course the rear cylinder, got one right here and one right there.